Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. Today I am honored to have Tom Burton, the author of The Revenue Zone and the co-founder and CEO of Lead Smart Technologies, which is, if, you, if I understand it correctly, is, is an advanced visual CRM content really yeah, it's, it's a, manager. Yeah, I would call it a next generation CRM tool for companies that are not ultra techie and have tons of technical resources, but they want to get something up and running quickly that's going to be used by their sales team. That's what we That's going to be used is the key. It's the key. Yeah, adopted yeah. is the key word, right? That's the key word. I know, I know how many CRMs I've spun up in the past and I'm like, I'm not using it anymore. I'm just using Evernote. You know, yeah. but I'm, I'm yeah. a small operation, so it's not that big of a deal. But I know a lot of companies are like, to their salespeople are like, stop using Post-it notes. Post-it yeah. notes are not analog. Yeah, our our spread, oh my God. Yeah. Excel is yeah. good for some stuff, not for keeping track of your leads. And it's super insecure too. So it's That's people are very concerned about security and keeping track of all of that. And Excel and Google Docs is not your best security no. strategy either. So it's good for what it's good for. And That's it's right. not good for and it's not good for other stuff that shouldn't be it for that. So how did you get started in all this? And we'll get into the revenue zone, which is what I really want to talk to you about. But how did you get into the whole software as a service SaaS industry stuff as an entrepreneur? Well I'm I'm a SaaS I'm a tech guy. I have a degree in computer science. I've been oh. in software companies my whole career. I've had several software companies, sold a company to Intuit a few years ago. So Oh. I've been around this. I've been Mailchimp, around the SaaS space. Is it Mailchimp? Mailchimp amounts? Uh, no, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> that one. That one. We were all kind of like our mouths strapped. And Mailchimp was purchased for what twenty billion or something like. Insane yeah, amount. we only got nineteen and a half billion. So it's kind of a oh a shucks. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's awesome. So you sold something into it. Yep. So I kind of, my career has kind of moved from software and then in my software company, I do consulting for a while. I had a digital agency for a period of time. I really got into digital marketing and everything with That's that. Fun. And then I kind of got the software bug a couple of years ago, which is where Lead Smart came into play. So That's, that's long wild. background. That's yeah. Well, and then, and then during all this, as if you didn't have enough to do, you decided to write a book, which is more of a framework. It's in the form of a book. But it's more than a book. It's a way of thinking, right? It's a way of first yeah, having so, internet. Yeah. So that really there were two things, right? When we started really going with Lead Smart as a CRM company, we were talking to our prospects, which were sales organizations, and listening to the challenges that they had. Clearly it, it became clear to me that B2B sales and marketing was really broken. And then I combined that with my own experience. And I, I think you may have seen this in the book, right? I was talking about I was in this board meeting and the board member was like, how confident do you feel about your projections? And I was like, <laughs> I love it. I don't actually, I don't know if I really do feel all that. And that was new to me. I've been in business for 30 years and you, I know how to go into board meetings. I know how to be prepared. But when he asked that question, it was just like a punch in the stomach. Ooh. And I think that also told me that not only B2B sales and marketing in general was broken, but my sales process and our sales process was broken. So yeah. that those two things together were the catalyst to really get me off my butt and do the research and the homework that led to the book and the revenue zone from there. So that's the backstory of how it got created. Oh, I'm, I'm reading it right now currently, and I'm really enjoying it. It's one of these books that it's an easy read. It's easy to digest. It's not too technical per se, but it's technical enough. And what I do appreciate is you put bullet points at the end of the chapter. Because by the time I get to the end of the chapter, I forget what that was at the beginning of the chapter. So I love business books that have like, and then you do one more, you do this, do discussion topics. So you really went for the stars on this. I really appreciate that because 
when I want to go back and reread the book, I go back to the bullet points. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, okay, you know, go back to my notes and stuff. Yeah, we want. I wanted to make it personally because I actually am a person who likes to read a hard copy of a book, or if nothing else, a Kindle even more than audio. So I wanted yeah. it to make it easy to highlight and go back and look at things and and as you see as you'll move on the book especially in chapters four and five it's very practical it's a very hands-on process of how you do this it's one thing I to talk that. about the problem but it's another to say here's your cookbook for how to actually deal with the problem so, there's so many business books out there that are so high level because they're trying to get you to be a consulting client which i'm sure you wouldn't mind if someone said hey tom i'd love it if you help us implement this but that's what I like so far is that it looks like you're going to just spell it out and help. And I like that when it's not like, here's a little bit. You spent $19 on this book, but I'm not going to give you everything. It's like, what? Yeah, it's interesting because when we were having editors and people looking at it, there was talk of, oh, there's too much detail here. You're going too deep. And I overrode them in a couple of cases because I want a book that is actionable. And it may not have every answer that you could do, but you can move down the road. And one thing you'll see is we built quite a resource center with some tools and other things you can download that. as you're going through. So again, it's a system that you can implement, hopefully, or make a really, really good dent, you know, entirely on your own. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Yeah, I'm excited to do it because, you know, the digital agency Goldstein Media is kind of funds this little enterprise of podcasting. Okay. It's fun <laughs> and zaniness. And I'm always looking for new ways to figure out how I'm going to bring more revenue in and all that good stuff. So that's really exciting. So, Todd, since you've been an entrepreneur for a while, what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? I like to ask people that. For me, I love the idea of seeing a problem and then working out the vision and the strategy for solving the problem. It's too bad I couldn't just stop right there and everything else would just work on its own and I would be happy. But then you actually have to implement that in the real world and build the organization. But what I really enjoy is taking a problem, a situation, distilling it down, building the right strategy, and then figuring out, okay, what's the right solution for that? And that's always been my successful actions as it relates to starting companies and, and having them grow. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, what's also the scariest thing for you at being an entrepreneur? The scariest thing, right, is always going from that nothing to something. You know, it's always easier to go from something to something better. But when you're starting something out and you have no customers, you have no money, you have no anything, right? The, the fun part of it is you can mold that and you can create it. You know, that's the plus part of it. But the scary part is you're starting from nothing. And, mm -hmm. and, and what I've learned even over the years is, you know, you, you have, you obviously have people that you've worked with before and you have other relationships, but you're still starting from nothing in that business and you have to take it to something. And that's, that can be scary. Yeah. I've always found that that to be terrifying in a, in almost in a healthy way. Like it's a good, that's almost like a roller coaster terrifying. Whereas you, yeah. you put like yeah. you put yourself into that terrifying situation yeah. because you want to get that feeling yeah, to kind of get the, everything moving that way versus terrifying. Like you didn't put yourself in that situation. And you're freaking out. It's a different kind of terrified, which is interesting. Yeah. No, it, it's a self-created adrenaline. Let's put it that way. It's adrenaline. Like, that's that's better right. than terrified. So what is the most important thing you carry with you all the time? It could be anything. So I think for me, it, it's a passion to improve situations, right? And change situations. And it gets me into trouble mm -hmm. at the same time. But the book yeah. is a great example of that. You know, is that a lot of people have said, man, why are you trying to, you know, the subtitle of the book is, the ultimate playbook for the next generation of sales, marketing, and predictable revenue growth. It's like, why do you want to go mess with that? You know, why do you want to go, you know, take on something like that? There's tons of sales books out there. There's tons of people talking about sales and marketing. I just have a passion to, when I see something that's not quite the way that it could be, then, and I feel like there's something that can be done about it, then that's, you know, like I said, probably a positive and a negative because it can sometimes get me into trouble, but it's just, it's just who it is. But it's true entrepreneur. It's finding an issue or finding something that needs to be fixed and, and not finding that it's done anywhere or it's not done well anywhere and just saying, heck with it, I'm going to do it. And yep. if it, and it flops, it flops. If it doesn't flop, you got something. 
Yeah. And even if the change, and as you'll see in the book, right, the changes that I'm proposing is a bit radical compared to what the traditional B2B sales and marketing process is, but we're in a different world, right? And sometimes you need to make radical changes to get radical results. Yeah. And and, another thing and, I like about the book is that it's current. You address COVID-19. And I feel like there's a dividing line with books now where it's like, if they were just like there's one called Retail Relevancy. It was put out by a good friend of mine, Ted Rubin, and his friend, John Andrews. They started writing it in 2016. And by the time they got around to finishing it, it was past the pandemic. They had to rewrite half the book. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole book, like the whole idea of retail change, mm -hmm. relevancy change, and they, were, they actually worked faster because there's something to write about. <laughs> there's even more to write about. And I appreciate good business books that are current or they have a second version coming out really fast saying, hey, we're addressing the COVID thing. There's the chapters that, you know, you're not, not gonna have in the first version updating you on stuff. And I, so I really appreciate that. I saw COVID-19, I'm like, he's addressing that. It's not something that he's just ignoring. It's an ever-present thing. Yeah, the things that were broken, right? When I said sales and marketing were broken, B2B, the, the things were broken before COVID. They just got amplified and spotlighted even more through the COVID process. And, and so you come out the other end of that and you probably remember the book is like even, I knew quite a few companies that their entire lead generation strategy was going to live shows and exactly. doing live events. And it's not that live events are going away, but they're not as frequent. There's more of a digital first mentality, right? And so you have to look at the world a bit differently than you did pre-COVID, but the problem was there before COVID, it just got, really amplified. You saw, it, you saw it more. You saw a lot of the things yeah. that were broken and needed to be fixed. Like the whole going, come back into the workplace thing is different because, wait, we can do this from home. We can do this from a co-working space. I don't have to drive 45 minutes to an hour to work. Some people had to drive two hours to work because that's where the job was. Now they can say, I'll come in twice a week. I feel like the teams are going to go more hybrid and they're going to go all remote. But the, I think companies, if they want to keep people, they're going to say, all right, Three days a week, you pick your days, you know, come in. I'll make sure one of them is Wednesday because we can have all staff meeting that day. So things have changed. Yeah, I think it's going to be hybrid, but you also have a lot of people that were working in an area or in an office and they, they were given permission, so to speak, to move anywhere they want during COVID. Yeah, it's a little different. And, yeah. and this is something also that if you built your whole sales and around in-person meetings, I've had several recently just. Oh yeah, come in for an in-person meeting, but there's only going to be two people in the office and four people are going to be on Zoom because they're living in a different location or so whatever talk about it is. hybrid. Talk about, talk hybrid. about hybrid, right, right. So yeah, how do you deal with that, right? You know, because everyone, oh, I want to do an in-person meeting. Then you can really build the relationship. Well, that's fine, but three-fourths of the people are are not in the meeting. So yeah, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I think things are going to, I think we don't have the answers yet. I mean, we're, we're in an endemic and then a pandemic anymore, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to be here forever. It's just going to be like the common flu. Mm -hmm. And it's just, oh, you got COVID. Oh, that sucks. All right, I'll see you in seven days. <laughs> that's the kind of thing. I mean, because you don't want to see anyone with, I mean, they don't say, oh, that's terrible. And I'm like, well, the flu sticks around for five days. And yep. you don't want to see them while they're in the, the throes of the flu either. Yeah. It's a, this is more current and people are thinking, all right, this is worse. No, the flu sucks just as bad. It can be really bad. So between lead spot and the revenue books, uh, you're keeping very busy. Do, I, mean, I guess you do a lot of public speaking as well, right? I've been, I've been doing more. So, you know, this is yeah. an area also that I'm really learning a lot about is just the whole digital influence and, and the online world. And as I talked about in another podcast, I was on a, a week or so ago. I've had LinkedIn connections and followers for a long time, but they're, they were what I call my friends and family, right? They were business colleagues, people I've worked with, people, you know, you it was, know. It was yeah. people I know, right? And when you launch the book, you realize, okay, well, there's a few friends and family that are going to want your book, but, but probably not, you know, not millions. Yeah, that was sympathy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, um, so then I really had to take a look at how do I start really building my online presence and my online network. And I'm just yeah. starting with that. I'm just really learning with that. And um, fun. it's fun. It's I, fun. I did LinkedIn backwards where I did it. It was an open networker for a while. I accepted everybody. I got LinkedIn ticked off at me for like three months where they had made me give everyone's email addresses to do anything. I've had to apologize and say, please, I will not do that again. 
And then to go quell everyone that I had no idea what I who I know. And it, it's worked. I like how you're starting from the beginning here. You're saying, I got my friends and family. Let me do it smart and get the right people in my network versus mine. I'm kind of going inside out. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's and and I think that is the right strategy that if you put the right people in your network, then yeah. Then when you post something, those are the people that want to hear from you. They're the people who are going to engage with your post there. And yes. then you can start to really uh, hockey stick your, your reach and your, um, you know, your set of connections by doing it that way versus having a bunch of people who don't give a crap about what you're really talking yeah, the, about. Or they'll just do the thumbs up. Like that's yeah. good, Tom. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you yeah. for sharing that yeah. with me. And no engagement. Yeah. You're like, gee, thanks. 15 people like my post, but no one said anything. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, hey, uh, exactly. So Tom, so Tom, let's say people want to find out more about the Revenue Zone. Where would they go to see that? Well, there's a website called the revenuezone.com, and that's where there's information about the book. And then, of course, you can go right to Amazon. Amazon has the book, plus it has the audiobook. So the audiobook just came no, out I was very impressed. I was, a couple yeah, of weeks ago. I didn't yeah. pick up the audiobook because a lot of times I'll pick up the audiobook so I can read and listen at the same time. But I'm like, this seems like a book I could just read and stick my teeth into, you know. Sometimes the audio book takes over and you forget to read the book and it's like, you miss stuff. Yeah. No, I sometimes will get the audio book because I like to listen to my car or something when I'm yeah. driving. And then I can go back and highlight the book or the, the uh, Kindle book or whatever. But anyway, the audio book is there for, yeah. um, we got a really good narrator. And, and uh, the important thing, it sounds good at one and a half speed. That was the other thing yeah, I learned about studio. building an audio book is how do you do it in a way that it sounds good at faster speeds? Yeah, so, it still sounds good at one, but it sounds right. better at one and a half, one, one right. point five. Right, which is something I never thought about until I went through this. You know, you know, always learning. So Amazon has all of that, plus the and the links are all there on the RevenueZone.com website as well. And then where can people find Lead Smart Technologies if they want to get, get a CRM that works? Um, LeadSmartTech.com. So leadsmarttech.com um, and, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm yeah. tburton5350. Like I said, I'm really working on trying to build up my relationships and network and not because I'm trying to sell stuff. I, like I said, I'm just trying to get the right people in the right network. That's what it's all about. Well, Tom, this has been so much fun. I know we plan on talking first and then doing a recording later. And I was like, let's just do the podcast. Let's just do it. <laughs> so yeah, Tom, this has been great. And we will see everyone next week. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network.